Hi, this is Brother Richard, and today we're continuing a lesson series, Prototokos Mystery. This will be part 385. We're continuing with a lesson titled Reality Transit. Mm -hmm. This will be part 4. <clears throat> we're talking about the new reality that we're about to enter in and the things that will pertain to it. <clears throat> Radical changes will ensue starting with the beginning of sorrows and continuing on to the final coming of the Lord. We're looking at situations that will take place in what's called the tribulation era. Scripture indicates in the tribulation period the human race will be divided into two groups. Those whose names are in the book of life and those whose names are not. Turn to Revelation 20 verse 15. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Lake of fire. So we find that the division that will determine a person's destiny will be whether his name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Now, Scripture indicates those whose names are in the Lamb's Book of Life will experience the gathering at the Lord's appearing. <clears throat> I, I title this the Lamb's Call. John 10, verses 14 to 16. <clears throat> We're looking at this uh, being initiated at the beginning <clears throat> of sorrows. I'm the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father and as I and I lay down my life for the sheep. Other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Now, of course, he's referring here to the Prototokos group, which is called from eternity. This group will be gathered into one unified unity at the time of his appearing. They all, of course, are listed in the Lamb's Book of Life. This brings us <clears throat> to the next principle. Scripture indicates in the tribulation period those who missed the rapture, whose names are in the Lamb's Book of Life, will be persecuted by those whose names are not. Again, the division, those whose names are in the book of life, and those whose names are not in the book of life. Those that miss the rapture will have to work out their destiny at the mercy of those whose names are not in the book of life. Revelation 9 verses 20 to 21. We're going to see some egregious examples of what they're going to have to go through.
And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone. So it's talking about they are all going to be driven by demonic influences, totally corrupted, thoroughly infused with not a human mentality, but a demonic mentality. This is how they're going to see life from the perspective of a demonized mentality. Verse 21, neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. Now, what we find here, verse 20 gives us their mindset. Verse 21 gives us the result of their activities, which is murder, sorcery, fornication, theft. Now, the question arises, who are they murdering? Who are they stealing from? Who are they trying to bring under uh, uh, influence through sorcery? Those who are, have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Yeah, so we have their names in the Book of Life. They're going to be the target of these individuals. But since this is their behavior, aren't they also doing it to each other? Yes, but I would say to a very, very less extent. So the entire behavior is targeted towards those of the testimony of Jesus? Yes. That's true. Yes. Hmm. Yes. And we're going to see more evidence of that. <clears throat> now, turn to Revelation 13, verses 7 to 8. And it was given unto him, the beast, to make war with the saints, and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. So the whole human race outside of those whose names are not in the book of life are going to come under his power his influence as we see all kindreds and tongues and people and nations <clears throat> and we see the description is telling us he is going to his main object he's going to be obsessed with making war against the saints. saints. So he's going to use the whole human race in this obsession to destroy the saints. And we match this with Revelation the ninth chapter. And we see that the average individual will be a murderer, a fornicator, a rapist, a thief. Why? Because they're engaged, they are incited by this individual. Remember, he is the god of all the demons that these people are worshiping. Right. Right. So the demons that are controlling him, the, the, the fallen angelic intelligences that are overseeing these people, all answer to the beast. And the beast is obsessed with one thing, and it's destroying the saints. So everything is focused upon making the life of the saints as miserable as humanly, subhumanly possible. From the point of this influence, so we're talking about the intensity of the influence, which makes them behave like this, through to the point where the beast, the false prophet, Satan, spew out frogs 
to convince the other demonic um, beings to fight in the Battle of Armageddon. Mm -hmm. So that period of time. Does the influence in these people who are who have normalized this behavior increase during that period of time? Oh yes, arithmetically and exponentially, yes, sure. Because he's getting more power all the time. So as he has more power, the humans who are not, uh, whose names are not in the Book of Life, become more and more engrossed in that behavior. Yes. Okay. Yes. The zenith of that behavior is the mark of the beast. Right. <clears throat> but let's go on. Scripture promises deliverance to the saint, Jew or Gentile, who remains faithful. Daniel 12, verse 1. So while all this is going on, the scripture is saying the saint is expected to remain faithful to the Lord, even though he's enduring this tremendous affliction. <clears throat> I imagine that understanding this would help a few people comprehend that it's not a good idea to, <laughs> to miss the rapture. Yes. <laughs> and at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people, and there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered Every one that shall be found written in the book. So if your name is in the book of life, the chances are you're going to be martyred, you're going to be killed. But the Lord says, remain faithful unto death. Now, we want to take a look at something here. But a tribulation period is designed for the recalcitrant saint that didn't make the rapture. Mm -hmm that he might be saved. It's also got another design, which you might find interesting. Principle, scripture indicates a group of Adamics, known as the people of the saints, will be called out of Luciferian society by the prototokos after the rapture. In other words, there's going to be a group whose names are also in the Book of Life, who didn't get called by the Lord. Mm -hmm. Turn to Revelation 18, verses 3 to 5. Yes, of course. It's talking about the haunted city. This is the first half of the tribulation period. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven. This is not the Lord's voice. This is the Prototokos. Saying, Come out of her, my people that you be not partakers of her sins, and that you receive not of her plagues. So ultimately, you're going to have two callings. At the beginning, what we're heading to is what I call the Lamb's Call. And at the tribulation period, you're going to have another calling, which I term the Prototokos Call. Mm -hmm. The Lamb calls his sheep which is the Prototokos, and the Prototokos call people their people, their which are the Adamics. The people of the saints. The people right. of the saints out of the world. The Prototokos call, that's what you call them. Yes. And I think you'll also find this interesting. Scripture teaches this group <coughs> will be highly commended by the Lord <coughs> for ministering to the saints. 
those that answer the call to come out. So when they receive the call, they're going to come out and they are going to be the ministers to the saints that have been left behind at missed the rapture. Matthew 25. I'm going to start in verse 34. As you're turning, the Lord comes and he has the human race gathered <clears throat> into two groups. One group called the sheep, the other group called the goats. The group separated by the angels when they gather them on the earth. So the second gathering. But this is not a gathering of the prototokos. This is a gathering of the nations. Verse 33, And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye, blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was in hunger, you gave me meat. I was thirsty, you gave me drink. I was a stranger, you took me in. Naked, you clothed me. I was sick, you visited me. I was in prison, you came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee and hungered and fed thee, or thirsty and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger and took thee in, or naked and clothed thee? When saw we thee sick or in prison and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as you have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, the saints that survived, that missed the rapture, you've done it unto me. Then shall he say unto them on the left hand, Now these are those that were called, didn't answer the call. Humans, Adamics, the people of the saints, but they did not respond when the voice from heaven came forth. They kept in Luciferian society. Mm. Then shall he say unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, you cursed, into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was in hunger, he gave me no meat. I was thirsty, he gave me no drink. I was a stranger, he took me not in. Naked, you clothed me not. Sick and in prison, you visited me not. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee in hunger, or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? Notice they call him Lord. So these are not Luciferians. Sure. Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as you did it not unto one of the least of these, his brethren, you did it not to me. These shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. The righteous into life eternal. How is this going to be arranged? Turn to Daniel, the seventh chapter. Daniel 7, verse 27. And the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven <coughs> shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and all dominion shall serve and obey him. So when he divides them <coughs> and makes his pronouncement, then they enter into the kingdom and you and you and I give them their portion in the kingdom. They're going to be allocated to you. Each saint, each prototokos is going to have a nation under him of humans <clears throat> that he's going to delegate authority to, just as he was delegated authority to by the Son. Who do the people of the saints rule over? They don't rule in the sense of having intelligences under them, they are given dominion, life, position in the kingdom to enjoy life, to have experiences. So they're citizens in other words. <laughs> okay. But it's still called a kingdom. 
They are given a kingdom. Yes. They're given a kingdom to participate in. Right. In other words, they're going to inherit <coughs> the new earth. In eternity. It starts with the millennium earth in temporality. They will sire the generations of humans that are going to experience life in the millennium. That's where you get the population okay. that's going to okay. come forth. So all those whose names, well, I've answered the question. No, is the answer. <laughs> now there's much to be said here because <clears throat> you can take this in many directions. These, these <clears throat> people of the saints, they all have names in the Book of Life, the Lamb's Book of Life. Doesn't mean the descendants do, but they do. They do, right. <clears throat> and they have it from eternity. Doesn't mean like the prototokas that they were called, but it means that in the Lamb's Book of Life before they were created, it was noted. Turn to... Um, Just before you turn. Yeah. When you said it doesn't mean that the descendants too, the descendants being the millennial men, mm -hmm. does that explain why so many of them don't make it when the Satan is loose yes. for a short while? That's their test. Right. Unlike the ones that were given the kingdom, they don't have a test. Right. Turn to Psalms 139. Verse 16. Okay. Thine eyes did see my substance. Now, David is representing the human race. <coughs> Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being imperfect, and in thy book all were written. <coughs> in continuance were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. So in other words, David is saying the book of life you had everything written about me and the whole human race before you created any of us hence the people of the saints names are already etched right. before their creation right. <clears throat> so the people that uh, mr smith's going to rule over that he's going to delegate authority to it's all in the book it comes to pass <clears throat> revelation 20th chapter, which is a voice from heaven. It's not talking about one individual, it's talking about the prototokis speaking to their people on earth. Come out. <clears throat> this is your time, your testing. Go forth, minister to the prototokis on earth. That's going to determine your position in the time of the restoration. <clears throat> and then, of course, it talks about life in the millennium. Every man will sit under his vine and his fig tree. Nobody will um, cause them to fear or anything else. They have a position, a job, a function. <clears throat> it's not soil tilling. It has to do with <clears throat> a talent that basically you have imparted into them to be brought out at the time they experience life in the millennium. They're going to multiply the ability that they have in the earth <clears throat> to bring forth. So at the time of the <clears throat> end of the millennium, they're going to show that they have been a profitable asset to the prototokis that oversees them. So God has a marvelous plan here. As we are faithful in our calling it's going to redound to the human race to bring forth to be brought forth as we are being brought forth by the son he says basically as my father sent me so send i you you're going to do the same thing i'm doing and it's going to work out to a point beyond belief <clears throat> 